Hey, how's it going? I'm at All EV with Dave Giles, and you did some exciting stuff with uh, Elizabeth this morning. You actually drove a Bolt battery over to uh, Dalhousie? Yep, we took a Bolt battery over to Dalhousie's RESL lab, which is their energy renewable storage lab uh, for research with uh, Dr. Lucas Swan. Yeah, and he took us on a great tour and showed us some cool stuff that we'll show you in a minute. Uh, they took a forklift, took that big old heavy battery off, put it in the storage, and we went inside and they showed us what they did with the uh, two batteries, the Leaf battery that yep. we took out and also the uh, Tesla battery they took out yep. as well. Yeah, they got the Tesla battery all apart, uh, they had the Leaf battery all apart, and uh, we dropped the Bolt battery off for them to uh, actually do a little bit of uh, research on. So let's listen in. Standard leaf pack. We uh, pop the top, which is pretty easy on this one because, uh, and we're photo documenting this. We'll send you some of this stuff when we're done. Perfect. But it's only a couple of bolts on this one, on this cover. Yeah. And then it's got the, like a seal. Uh, this like is live thing. and operating, by the way. Yeah. Please don't touch anything. Yeah, yeah. It's got thing. a seal right here. Yeah. And what we found was a uh, one of those hooked linoleum knives. Yeah. You know the ones I'm talking yeah, about? Like super heavy duty. Yeah. Worked great. And you just put it in there, it's screwed. And then it's got the interior wall, so you can't do any harm, oh. right? You just dive that thing in there and cut. And then the main BMS was right here. Okay. Oh, it's safe there, yeah. Yeah, and so I have a box here somewhere I can show it to you. But anyway, so it had four main connectors coming into the bottom of it. Yeah. And we just simply removed them. And then we go through and we cut one wire at a time. Not the whole harness, obviously, it was short. Yeah, that's right, yeah. But we clip it one wire at a time. These are the original wires. Yeah. And then we crimp on our own connector system. That's the same as though, yeah. And then that goes over here to our VMS. Yeah. And then we also tapped into their voltage, or sorry, their temperature system. And we applied our own temperature sensors too. And then we cut a slot, the cover's out in the container right now, but we cut a slot in there so that we could put the cover back on and all our cabling uh, came right okay. out the side. And that's your thing, so you can take the module, put it in, plug it in, power it, take it out, add it to another module. Yeah, the only reason yeah. we have the top off right now is because we're looking at the thermal response of the pack with the cover on yep. and with the cover off. Uh, okay. Because in a second life application, you have that choice. You might choose to remove it. Yeah. From a safety perspective, it's nice to leave it on, yeah. but if the added heat rejection capability is significant, yeah. that might advantage you in the market. It's like, so this is a standard it's range. Like 52 kilowatt then. This yeah, is well, we're going to know when we test yeah. it. We still haven't tested it, but a couple of key things you've got. What yeah. I'm really surprised at is... Yeah. That all the space in the front means it's like really heavily loaded on the back right, side yeah, of the vehicle yeah. now. Hey, no one, we no, had to pick it up with the forks right here because otherwise it would tip backwards. Now I know it, I'm noticing that with the cars. Like when I lift the entire Tesla with our forklift, some of them I must stay right at the mirror. Yeah. Others I have to move back towards the back door yeah. and it's the size of that. Now what really surprised me was this. Yeah. I mean that's a big chunky aluminum block. That doesn't do anything. It, well, it must do something. It must be for support. There must be a couple of bolt holes in there. I think maybe they figured out, well, there's support here, though. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, yeah. I get the feeling your front left wheel is right here. Okay. I think prob this is just my conjecture, but I think they probably found out in crash testing uh, that they could shove a wheel back yeah. in there and destroy any module yeah. that was there and lead to a fire. Yeah. Uh, and so, so by adding this, they felt that that wheel would never ingress past there yeah. and would never go in, in over that way too. Yeah, like see the just, modules yeah, are really nice and closed yeah, up. Yeah, they're really cool. So getting the cover off this was an absolute You were bear. saying that, yeah. First of all, you can see that the edge of the pack is here. Yeah. The sealant is here. So that's a long way into reach, yeah. right? Like imagine with a, with a well, hook knife. Uh, the windshield removal tool would take that. I think it, it might, it but certainly be... the cable type wouldn't work because no. you come around this corner and just right, cut yeah. in. That's right. And then it's got odd corners here too, yeah. like they're not straight. Well, I'm going to start, unless you guys want, I have another one of these packs with a cut in it. If you want, I can bring that over. Okay. Yeah. 
the real trick here though is that this looks easy and say, oh, you just yeah, kind of yeah. cut around. Yeah. But when they build it, they put the modules in and then they uh, they bring over the penthouse tray. Completely oh, assembled. Okay. So let's go look at that. Yeah, I can see that. That's how that is there. So what you saw there is where the video stopped is Dr. Lucas Swan took us into a back room and he totally had the controllers and everything stripped right down. So we didn't show you any of that. I took one picture. I'll show you that right here. This is the one picture he allowed me to take. But they're doing some cool research and really it's the, I guess it's a second life for batteries. So batteries that come out of the vehicle still have usage of them. And uh, I know the last time we were talking about it, they actually had all the coolant hooked up to the Tesla battery and everything. Yeah, yeah they're running a test on the batteries and uh, essentially the RESL lab uh, in, in a nutshell is really just about taking uh, batteries from for Second Life and uh, using them for storage uh, purposes for solar, wind and so on and, uh, and they cycle the batteries to see what kind of life they still have left in them, what they mm. can use them for and, uh, and part of the students research projects as well too. So really cool, and you could tell that they had a hard time even pulling those cases yeah. apart to get in there. Yeah. So really neat, it, uh, it can show you what you can do with a battery for Second Life and uh, hook up your home to get off the grid, yep, so to that's speak. Right, yeah. Exactly, yep, yeah. And some of these batteries have enough power to power your house for two or three days, so. All right, so that's what we did over at Dalhousie, and uh, make sure you click on the subscribe button down in the bottom here, and uh, like, make comments, ask questions, and ring the little bell when you subscribe too, and you'll get all the uh, new updates that definitely, we put a video yeah. together. Yeah, all definitely. right, see you later.